Hello and welcome to our second Snapshot webinar. Today we'll be looking at rapid video review in the CCTV control room. Reviewing hours of video is labor intensive and error prone. In this Snapshot webinar, we'll hear from CCTV user group member Kinnesense about this technology and how you might be able to use it in your system. I'm Tom Reeve, Chief Communications Officer at the CCTV user group, and I'm joined by Vernon Pratt from Kinnesense who will tell us about this technology. Hello, Vernon. Hi, Tom. Kinesense is widely used by the police for analyzing video and preparing case reports. Vernon will be talking quite a lot about Kinesense as a product, but he assures me it won't be a hard sell. The objective is to help us understand what's possible with computer-aided video analysis, how the police use it, and how you might be able to use it in the control room. So Vernon, I'm looking forward to hearing about how this could be useful for local authorities. Thanks for the intro, Tom. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm here to talk to you about Kinescence Video Analytics. Kinescence LE is a full capture to court solution. And um, what we mean by that is capture, we can ingest video from multiple sources, from CCTV, covert cameras. Um, we then analyze it, and we create reports from our findings. And those reports can then be used in court as evidence. They can be shared with investigation teams, CPS, et cetera. It's been around now since 2009 and is used by police, government agencies, and security organizations. There's over 100 police forces globally. It's also used by high profile UK retailers. We have a number of um, large, like supermarkets that use it for redaction. Uh, obviously that's a, a big thing now with GDPR. It's an out of the box solution uh, with a couple of different models. It's an annual subscription. And, and so there are a couple of models for how it's deployed. It's very easy to deploy. Um, it doesn't require a really uh, expensive computer. It can be done a good spec, but nothing crazy and it's a very user-friendly interface. So it is a, is a simple solution to use. So the challenge is that CCTV is used in over 64% of investigations. I think on major investigations, murders, that sort of thing, it's more like 75%. And often a case will have hundreds of hours to retrieve. The key tasks are trying to get different videos into a viewable format. There are over 4,200 different formats, according to the Home Office. Um, Kinescence has 900 virtualized players, so we can play pretty much any format. And that is from CCTV, say covert cameras, Milestone, Genetech, um, different VMS systems. So we, we can ingest video usually pretty simply. So manually searching the footage to find key events is a big task. You've got 24 hours of video, generally someone will have to sit and watch it for 24 hours or they'll have to speed through it and obviously speeding is a risk because you might miss something. We have automated event detection so when I ingest the video it is applying an algorithm to every frame of the video. What I can then do is set up a filter and look in a particular area by direction, colour, um, person or vehicle so I can define my criteria and I will just concentrate on what happens in a particular given zone. So collaboration between police and other investigators or the CCTV control room, that's another issue. Um, I go to some London boroughs and I regularly see police in there and the operators will spend hours sitting next to them, babysitting them, going through, showing them bits of video. So what you can do is actually set up a viewing kiosk for the police. You know they're coming in, you set it up for them and you can let them get on with it without you having to sit over their shoulder constantly. Preparing the intelligence court disclosure reports is a lot of work. Um, with Kinescence, we can create video reports, Word PDF reports for the investigators, so CPS. Everything is done in line with our video review. So as we tag events, it's automatically creating reports. We can export just the important bits. That saves a huge amount of time. 
And then another one, obviously very relevant to yourselves, is redaction for GDPR and for your subject access requests. We have built-in tools to do redaction in generally less than 10 clicks. So that works on keyframes, so it's not a case if you've got to redact every single frame. So before I start the video, I just want to show you a couple of things. So this is a scene, and I'm actually going to use this video so that you can see it. Um, this shows at the bottom on the timeline, you'll see the orange sprites. That shows some movement in that video. That could be a person, a car, a cat, a dog, anything that moves in that video. So someone would have to sit, this is a two hour video, someone would have to sit watching to see what, what goes on. What I do is I set up a filter. So if we look now down the bottom, you'll see in the driveway in the bottom right hand corner, I've set up to only show me what happens there. So by doing that, I eliminate everything that's happened beforehand, anywhere else on that video, and I just jump to my key events. So two hour video, I can probably watch this in about three minutes. So we literally can reduce time by as much as sort of 98%. So we, we basically we solve, we solve crimes a lot faster because someone doesn't have to sit and watch through it. You could have a, an investigation and you've got video from five, 10 different cameras and say someone's got to sit and look through it. For yourselves in um, CCTV control rooms, a lot of activities are possibly need, deemed not worthy for investigation by police, but the local authority and the specialist departments still expect to pick up the cost. So if you can find the evidence quicker for minor crimes and the usual fly tipping, graffiti, antisocial behavior, then you can actually justify pursuing it. So I think it, it would be a really big help for local authorities to go after those crimes that maybe need someone normally to spend hours and hours looking into, but by being able to speed through the video using video analytics, it actually justifies you pursuing it. As I mentioned earlier, to help comply with GDPR, we've got very easy to use tools, uh, redaction, general public, bystanders, suspects, witness. Um, we're, we're in Sainsbury's. They use it across all 600 stores and they'll get somebody faking an injury and claiming they tripped over something. So they use our redaction because when they send the software off to the insurance company, they've got to redact other people in the video. A lot of companies now outsource it. I'm talking to one of the uh, rail companies at the moment, they outsource it and I think they pay something like hundred pound or more than that for every time they outsource. Well, the software has it all built in so you can do that yourselves. That's just a quick example of redaction. So we can redact single individual, multiple people. We can put an arrow over it, tag it. We can put the time frame of the video into it or we can redact the entire background and just show the person visible. We have a lot of clarification tools built in, so we don't need things like Adobe Premiere, so we can de-blur, de-skew, contrast. You see in this example here, that is a video at night, and I've taken a short clip, and I've actually been able to see there is a waste bin there that's grunned on. And that's using the tools built into the software. I can do the same. This is a car and a car park. The number plate is very blurred. Again, I've used our inclusive tools to get a reading on the number plate. On the police side, they will generally go to their forensics unit. If the crime happens on a Friday evening, they'll have to wait till Monday. Then there might be a backlog. So having the tools built into the software, the operators, investigators can do very quickly themselves it means they can start the investigation straight away they're not going to have to wait so just to give you an idea here um, I'm, I'm going to focus here on a person earning about 20 pound an hour working in a CCTV control room might not be the same everywhere but this is obviously allowing for employers contributions equipment the usual so one camera, one week is 168 hours. If somebody physically had to sit and watch that and you were paying them 20 pound an hour, then you're looking at over 3000 pounds for someone to investigate that just from one camera. So as I said, I've been into London boroughs 
quite a lot and the police are in there regularly taking up staff time can you show me this video can you download this can you have a look can we search for this and the same you're like you've got all got your own specialist units antisocial behavior flight being housing where again you'll be asked to look at video for them if you were to set up a viewing kiosk in a room and say right we'll set the video up you go and look at it it will benefit them tremendously um, and they could potentially share the costs because they will see the benefits. If they can sit down and look at a fly tipping video, you know, 10 hours of video to try and find out it's worth their time. So I think, you know, there, there is definitely potential them to uh, share the cost. So a typical license, so it, it's available either machine licenses or specific named users, 11,000 pound a year, which breaks down to 30 pound a day. So if I look at my 20 pound an hour cost, you need to save collectively, and that's across everybody, just one and a half hours a day or 10 hours a week for the software to pay for itself. Now, a, a job with 100 hours, you can probably save 90 plus hours on that job. The return on investment is actually very, very quick. And for control rooms that actually maintain the city's cameras, just adding a small charge per camera on the annual contract will definitely help you cover the cost with some boroughs now that have over a thousand cameras you could very easily share that cost so this is an example of a trial we did with hampshire police fairly recently uh, they were working on a couple of cases and they ingested three weeks worth of video which was uh, over 500 hours they only actually watched 14 hours of video so they didn't need to watch 490 hours so they cost an officer at 35 pound obviously it's a bit higher than themselves but they said in four weeks they saved 17,000 pounds they would save over 200,000 pound a year which would be the equivalent of them employing between five and seven additional officers Kinnison's has been used in court GMP convicted Glyn Williams in 2017 and they had to look at 1,660 CCTV clips for the murder of Sean Roberts. It was challenged in court and Judge Richard Mansell QC said that using this software, and that was Kinnison software, constituted an independent review. So it has been used in court and it's, it's been suggested to me about um, authorities sending video to police forces for their DEM system and the video quality is compressed so much the video quality that comes out of Kinnison's is exceptional and it's been used in court time and time again and there certainly is no issue at all. So before I go into the video then, basically we find evidence 20 times faster. That leads to an increase in conviction rates, 40% reduction in reporting. I would say it's actually a lot more than that. I did a case with Thames Valley Police recently and they had a lot of surveillance video and they reckon it would have taken them a week to create their reports. We did it on the fly as they reviewed the video. There was no additional reporting time. And all of this motivates staff. So that's the end of that. I will actually now go to my PowerPoint. So this is my home screen. So this is where I will ingest my video. On the left hand side, you will see the videos that I've already imported. So this is a management tool. So at the top is the um, we'll store videos. Maybe this could be video from one street and then I'd have another folder with video from a different street. So add my video. So I have the options of CCTV, covert cameras and video management system. So CCTV, standard file from a camera. This could be off your network from a NAS drive, USB, etc. Multi-sequential files, so if your camera's recording in, say, three-minute chunks, we would ingest it, put it on the timeline, and it would all stitch together. Analog players, probably you, you wouldn't use, but uh, certainly police would use maybe a VHS recorder for a, a cold case. We can, we can ingest from IP cameras, live cameras, but I will stress that Kinnison's is really a post-event detection system, so the crime has been committed, and you now have the video and you want to review it. Potentially we could stream it live and maybe have a small buffer of a couple of minutes just to allow the analytics to be doing it on the fly. 
and we can import audio and add it to our uh, storyboard. So maybe there's a, a 999 call came in the same time, you can add it into your reports. Covert, we are integrated with all of the major covert cameras. So again, things like fly tipping, where cameras are put in certain areas where it, it happens. We're integrated with Ovation, Time Space, Covenants, all of the, the major ones and some others that don't show here. VMS, we're integrated with Milestone and Genetech. Uh, we have been in conversation recently with um, Synectics to integrate with them as well. So what I'll do is I will show you how I ingest. So I go and search my file. So if this was on my network, and choose my video. It will analyze the video. It will tell you what the video is. So it's an AVI. Uh, AVI, is, as you know, is they vary. They're not all the same. Uh, this will detect whether this is playable video. It will warn me if there's an issue. It will show me the first frame. So straight away, I know what I'm looking at. I can see if I've got any problems. I might have something like a uh, spider's web in the corner. So I might want to avoid that and import it because that will give you false positives. So there are ways of dealing with things like that. Also, if you've got very high definition video and you're looking for something that's in the background somewhere, then you can actually focus on a particular area at the import and that will improve your speed of ingest as well and the results. I then say what sort of detection I want. So I'm gonna look for objects, direction and color. We do have face recognition, face detection as um, options as well. Not everybody wants them, not everybody uses them. Obviously there's lots with GDPR. Uh, so we don't include them as standard, they are optional extras. But uh, I'm gonna look for my standard events. Give the video a name, so I could give it a specific title or I'm just gonna use the one that was on the video when it was given to me and I select here where it goes on this left hand side. I have the ability to adjust the time frame. So if the camera was, the time was wrong on the camera, when I'm looking at it, I don't want to be looking at my timeline and saying, okay, that was three hours and 23 minutes out for every event I'm looking at. I can adjust it here and on my timeline, it will show it to me at the correct time. I do have the ability if I want to add a map to where my camera's deployed, I can paste in here um, GPS coordinates, and it will then show a camera on my map. So I can associate individual videos with actual cameras, and I'll show that later on. I would then give it my reference information. This is totally customizable. You'd have some fields that you have to do, but all of this is totally customized. This will show up in your reports. And then I will click begin processing. I'm not gonna do this because obviously we are on a limited time. But at this point now, in, on the back screen here, you would see this would be importing and I could actually start searching my software straight away. Well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go to one I did earlier. So this is the video you saw in the PowerPoint. So what I've got here is a street camera looking down here. Everything you see at the bottom is some movement in this video. Now, generally with crimes, you know, roughly where they happened. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually draw a filter and I'm gonna draw it down in this, where this house is. So I'm only interested in who goes in and out. So this may be a camera in a housing estate and you're, look, you're interested in the drug dealer. So I can choose by direction. So specifically, I could say I'm only interested in something moving up the street. I'm gonna look for everything, so I want to see who goes in and out. I can look for different colors. So I could particularly say I'm looking for somebody wearing a green shirt. Depending on the video quality, if it's nighttime, colors can change. So I'm just gonna look for all colors. And then I can look for, is it a person or a vehicle? A vehicle currently is something with wheels. We are working with uh, London Borough at the moment. They're supplying us with video and we're defining now, is it a bike, is it a car, is it a bus? So we're actually gonna drill that down further. 
So there's what my options. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly draw a box here and save it. So if I now go back to my review, this is without the filter. If I then turn it on, you'll see now I've only got seven or eight events. And what I can do quickly now is just play the events. So it's skipped 10 minutes. I didn't have to watch. I'm not interested in this person up the top. This guy has come in here. He's walked in to the property. One hour later, he comes back out. He's changed. Now, if someone would be sitting watching that hour, waiting, or they would be fast forwarding and potentially they could miss something. And this will just keep going on. So this two hour video, I can play in literally a matter of minutes. So what I'll do here is I'll pause it. If I wanted, I could now take a still image, add it into my report. I can actually tag it. So I can say, ah, oh, this is interesting. This is where suspect uh, exit and put some notes. So when I said about the, uh, the reporting, I'm actually adding these as I review it. I don't have to do any of this afterwards, no cutting and pasting into Excel sheets and set up with this interesting critical and add it. What that's now done is added it into my tag report. So I can do that. And what other things I can do is I can say, actually, this bit of video here is important. And I can add it into now my video report. I can clip the video so I can cut it down if I, if I copied too much. I could say, actually, let's take all of these bits of video, add them into my report. And now what I'm doing is I'm creating a storyboard. <coughs> um, so I've now got all of the key clips. I don't need to do the entire two hour. If I wanted, I could do that. And then I could export this off as a video, either as an AVI, an MP4, or to a DVD. I can add information to my thing. So I could have the local authority, crest, badge. <coughs> I can put my title in, any comments about it, then burn it off to disk. And I can either email it, share it, put it on a DVD and send it out. Any questions at this point? No, I think we'll, we'll probably hold the questions until the, until the end. You've, uh, okay. Yep, yeah. Fine. So I'd, I'd say, I'd say carry on. <coughs> okay. Unless lovely. anybody wants to jump in with urgent question of the moment, but just, just let me know. Okay. Um, right, so if I go back to my tags, um, what I've done here is I've created every event that I've said, this is interesting or this is critical. I can then search through these. So if I just type in blue, it just shows me anywhere where the word blue is used. I can export this off now as a Word doc. Like if I look at this one uh, here, I can go to this video and then I can actually play that video clip and it will take me to a diff that piece of video. So here I did a search for somebody wearing red and it's found them. So all of my tags and my reports, I can just go to and it will find them. I could have multiple people working on this together. They can all input their own piece of information and then I can drill it down and just change my report depending on what I need. What I can then do is export this to Word and create all of my comments and still images. So if I just click on Word, and this is one that I created earlier, as you can see, I've got my camera times, comments, and all of my images. So it's very, very simple, and it can be customized with your logo and any other information. Yeah, so the video that I showed you originally, I've picked up every car or person that went through here. So if I show all this, actually, everybody that walked down that street was picked up car, I might say, okay, I'm just interested in maybe a red car. And then scroll through it. 
is that my car? So I can very quickly pick up key pieces of information. I talked earlier about maps. So if I put the GPS in, it would have shown me the camera. I can then adjust it. And then I can click on the piece of video that when I ingested it, I can associate video to a camera. So I might have a camera looking down this street, a camera looking down this street, and I can show all of the different um, video that was relevant to it. And if I tagged anybody, it would show them. So I can quickly build up my, my case. And obviously the police use this a lot. Uh, and I think that you could work with the police here and with your antisocial behavior, graffiti, in the same way they can actually um, build up their case for convictions and say from the police point of view, you can let them get on with it without you having to um, give up what you should be doing and say, looking after them. Uh, right, what I will show you now is the uh, some clarifications and some annotation. So if I go to another video, this particular here is somebody who is going to steal a car. So this person walks along here. I'm actually going to stop it there and I'm just going to take that bit of video very quickly. I'm going to add it into my report. And if I go annotate and select that video, what I can now do is drop a little halo over this person. And then I can just move them along and track them. Again, I've been to police forces where they say they have to do every single frame. I'm just going to take sort of seven or eight keyframes. I can tidy it up if I want to, if I've missed a little bit. So I could just wiggle that slightly, but I've pretty much covered it. I can change the type of redaction. Alternatively, I could black out the background and leave them clear. So that's a really quick way of redacting. Um, I could also, if I'd wanted, I could put an arrow over their head. And in exactly the same way, I'll just move the arrow. I could add a bit of text, so I could use the timestamp from the camera and drop it in. So really quick way of annotating a video. I can, um, let's, let's go back to my review. And so I've got a load of clarification tools. So you saw earlier I did the uh, bin. This one here, I want to try and read this number plate. This is actually a video. So I'm just going to take a little clip of the video add it into my video report and then if I go uh, clarification I'll just stretch my x-axis Straight away, you can see that I've, I can now read that number plate clearly. Everything I've done down the bottom is captured. So ISO 17025 is now a big thing. Um, I'm not sure I'm, where you're at with that. Police forces have been kicking it back quite a bit, um, delaying it by a couple of years. But everything I've done here is recorded. And if I clicked on this button here, I would create a disclosure report and that would show me everything I've done to that image. So if in court I was challenged, how did you get that? You've done some wizardry in Photoshop. 
I can actually know this is what I've done and somebody else following exactly the same would get the same results. So that was my final result. I can then add that into my image report. And again, I can then move this onto my video report and I can export this off as my AVI DVD. Uh, various other things I can do in clarifications. So I did show you a couple of, if you want, I can show you the, uh, the dustbin. So here, nighttime video, you can't, really can't see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. I will just take a short clip, go into my video report, clarify. I'll do a histogram edit on this. And we do obviously provide training for all of these things. And there's my results. And again, just add it to my report. And there it is. That's, that looks great, Vernon. I'm conscious of time, so I just uh, thought we might... Uh, I, okay. Are I we could, is there I anything else you want? Yeah. I'll just show you one more thing. Just yeah? I won't go into okay. any real detail on it. But okay. I did mention at the beginning, we do have options for facial recognition and face detection. Mm -hmm. So in this video here, everyone walking through, they're not known, their faces are not stored, so they're showing up as unknown. But again, I could go into my grid and go to um, attributes for this video. And I say, okay, I might say, oh, I'm looking for somebody wearing a red hat. Where have you gone? And, oh, hang on, it's because I'm on feet. I've, I've just shown females now. If I show everybody, then I say, okay, there was a guy in a red hat, assaulted somebody, oh, there he is. And then I can go to that bit of video, play that bit of video. I could then say, where else does he appear in any other videos? He's not known, hence he's unknown, um, but we do have face detection. Um, this requires an additional database and you storing images. So this guy here, it's a 95% chance it's him, any information we've got stored on him. So you would build up your database, but like, this is an optional extra, not everybody wants it. So it, it comes as a, an added on feature. So All right, excellent. Okay, yeah, Tom, that probably covers everything in a, a very quick demo. Yeah, yeah. No, that was. Um, I mean, you breezed through that. I appreciate that. So, um, uh, it's very good. I had a few questions that popped up during the uh, discussion. What's the LE mean on the uh, the Kinesense LE? LE, as in the product name, it originally came from law enforcement. Okay. As I say, it's it's so much more than just police. We do have. In um, Asia, I know they're smart. some of the smart cities there are starting to use it. And I know we did a project in Dublin with the um, transport people over there. Okay. But uh, originally it was developed for police, hence LE law enforcement. Got it, got it, okay. And um, can you input from body cams and dash cams and, and so, so forth? Yeah, we can. Um, obviously a body cam or a dash cam is moving. And this, the analytics are based on motion detection. So if your camera is moving, everything is moving. Yeah. But that said, um, and again, a body cam generally, you're recording something in, while it's happening. You, I'm you, just going to cancel the, uh, the the screen sharing, I think, here. Shall we go off? To okay, that? yeah, I can stop sharing, yeah. Oh, there okay. we go. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be better. Yeah, if you want to come, my video if you on come back on view. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I can import a dash cam, body cam, and yes, we can add it to our story, but usually your bit of body cam will be a 20 minute section where you've seen somebody and you've turned it on. So you don't need to apply analytics to search 24 hours of video, but I can ingest it and I can then add it into my reports. So I could extract the key bit and put it in my report, but I wouldn't use the analytical side of it to try and find an event because A, it will typically be shorter and B, it will naturally be moving. So it would affect the uh, algorithms. Okay, terrific. And uh, let's see, um, what about the, the viewing in, you know, within the criminal justice system, you've got, you know, the, the issue of, can you look at the video without downloading a player and, and so on and so forth? What's the situation there? 
Um, we've got 900 um, built-in uh, virtualized players. So they will play pretty much every format. Mm -hmm. The system analyzes the, um, the headers and the metadata and it works out what it is and if it can play it. If for any reason it's not a standard AVI, it will, rec it will flag up and recommend the different players it has that will manage AVI. Right, but that's for the that's for the ingesting process, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, but what about when we get to the other end and you're presenting this to the court, and um, you know the 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 barrister, oh, yeah, the barristers have got to look at it. Have they got to download some players to be able to look at this? No, not at all. No, we would export it at the end as an AVR or an MP4. Right. So when I say we create a video or a DVD image, we would make that as an AVI or a an MPEG for uh, yeah MP, MP4. Okay, so they can they can just play it on Windows Absolutely, Media, yeah. Windows Media Player, or whatever they've got. Yeah, that, all of the above. Yeah, got it, got it. Okay, that's fine. And what what about the you know you're ingesting all this video, and obviously you're having to transcode it. You know, is there any degradation in the transcoding process? No, mm -hmm. no, there isn't. No, so and and I think you said also you're not you don't alter the original. No, this is a working copy. We don't work on the original. So if, for instance, the defense counsel said, hang on, I, you know, I'm challenging it, you can still send them the untouched original video. We've not done anything to that. Right. <clears throat> but say we hash every frame of the video in the working copy. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got total um, audit trail. Right, right. Yep. Okay, and um, what, what about the, I mean, the licensing option? I mean, are there any licensing options here? And the other question we had that came in um, also is, does licensing include all of the updates that, you know, go with that? You okay, know, so. Yep, there are, there are two licensing models. It's either a, what we call a machine license, so it's tied to a PC. So in an environment where you had a viewing station and you might get different people wanting to use it at different times, then anybody can log in. Um, because of audit trail, um, obviously what that means is you might have five people working on it and in court, can you prove who did that bit of work? For that instance, we have named users. So that person would then log in and it would be logging in as them. Now they could log in onto different machines, but it's traceable. Joe Bloggs did this, Joe Bloggs did that. So in court, can you prove it as you? Yes. On a machine license, yes, we can still track through a Microsoft login, but from Kinescent's LE point of view, you, Tom, could log in as Peter Webster. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's who actually did it. So right. got it. So okay. in, a review, in a viewing station situation, you would have it so that, yeah, people go on, but when it goes to court, the DFU, the forensic specialist, would probably do the final court submission bit. So typically, in a police world, the forensics unit would have named users, major yeah. investigations and that that need to get the results to find their evidence. They would generally have a machine license because they'll be sharing machines. All right. And the, um, somebody just uh, asked, does the licensing include all of the functionality? The license includes all of the functionality except for face detection, face recognition. They are extras. Okay. And to right. answer the previous question, um, yes, you do get all of the updates. We do a couple of updates a year. So the maps feature was introduced earlier this year that then customers would get um, all the updates. We do provide remote technical assistance that is chargeable and you buy blocks of 20 hours support. That might be you've got a video that you're having probably ingesting with, you want us to maybe help you find something, you want us to help you um, virtualize that player because in your authority, you've got cameras regularly that come up with the same format and you have problems. So rather than manually having to do it each time, yeah. we can actually write a code so that it will automatically ingest for you. All of right. those things come in the technical support and if you needed additional training, etc. Right, right. Okay. Now we've got um, somebody asked, I've, I've got 120 cameras on my system, some hybrids and a, a small amount of digital. What would I need to change to, to make this work? Um, as long as you're getting a digital file in, mm -hmm. it, it, to us, it, it doesn't matter. You might have one camera that records H264, another one's doing AVIs. That is not an issue. 
as long as it's coming in as a digital file, if it's on a USB or if you put it on your network on the NAS drive, that isn't an issue to us. Right. And megapixel, you know, that's a, um, we can, from a frame rate, we can go down to uh, as low as sort of two frames per second. Mm -hmm. We can obviously do HD video, 4k video. Um, there's not only face recognition, um, you need, I think it's between 50, 60 minimum pixels across the eyes. Right. That's for facial recognition. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing with facial recognition is you cannot have a highly compressed video. It, it's got to be good quality. It's like anything, got to be good quality facial recognition. Right. The camera has to be at a decent height, good lighting. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things with facial recognition. Yeah, all the That's all the usual caveats about facial recognition apply. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, obviously any video, you know, it's got to be decent video. If you've got a black street, no lighting, someone wearing all black clothing, hiding under a bus shelter, I, don't, mm -hmm. I can't see them. Well, if you can't see them, um, you know, they may move and suddenly the flash on their trainers is right. detected. And you go, ah, there's someone there, then you can manually wind back. But you know, you obviously have to have realistic expectations. Um, so it has to be decent quality video, of course. Sure, of course, of course. Okay, well, um, look, uh, we've kind of, um, we've been talking for about 45 minutes now, which is probably a, a little bit longer than we had uh, we'd promised, but I think it was quite interesting. I just wanted to say we will be sticking around um, for anybody who wants to carry on sort of a more informal conversation. Um, but we probably do need to wrap it up um, uh, at this stage and let anybody get off to any other meetings that they, uh, that they might have. But I'd just like to say um, thanks very much, Vernon, uh, for this presentation, you know, about Kinesense. I think it's okay. certainly just, taught me. Just up. one thing. Oh, Tom. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah Ilk has asked a question about um, logo recognition. Oh, right. Oh, I just, saw, I just see those come in. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually... Uh, we have been asked about looking at things like graffiti handles. So that is something that potentially if someone really wanted it, it is in our roadmap at some point. Okay. So you could detect a graffiti artist by their handle. Um, yeah. yeah, could I detect an Adidas logo on a tracksuit? That is actually something we did have on a case. Um, we haven't developed the algorithms yet to do that, but it is something that came up in a case and it is something potentially okay. we could do. Could we identify Puma, Adidas, that right. sort of. So okay. it's certainly possible as we go forward with the different um, recognitions. Why don't, yeah. we, why don't we carry on with this conversation? But let me just say, uh, we've got a few people who are leaving. I just want to catch anybody before they do. But just to say, uh, put a link to a feedback form in the, uh, in the chat. So if you do get a chance to leave us a bit of feedback, um, about these webinars that help us develop those uh, in the future. And also just going to say real quickly, if you, if you do have to leave us now, uh, this webinar will be available on an on-demand recording. Um, so uh, we'll have that available and I'll send the link around uh, to everybody. But uh, if you do have to leave us, thanks very much for joining, but let's carry on with the, the conversation and questions or anybody else who wants to, uh, to, to ask anything. Um, if you want to, even if you want to unmute yourself at this point and uh, jump in with a question, uh, just wave at me. Um, yeah, and feel free to call yeah. me direct or email me if you've got any other questions. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, this is good. Um, uh, I suppose one of the other questions I had was about, you know, whether this is going to change the workflow between councils and the police. And you sort of addressed that a little bit. But I mean, how would, how would you see that developing um, over time? Um, I, I think that, as I say, you know, when I go in and I see two officers come in and then an operator will go off and download some video for them and they'll sit there for hours watching it, um, it does take them away from actually monitoring screens, which is obviously part of their job. Um, I do think it will change it a lot. I think that they could then, if they were pre-notified of what they were looking for, they could upload the video. So if it was 24 hours, if it took an hour, an hour or two hours, whatever to ingest, they could pre-do that. The, the, and then they'd probably only need to spend a couple of minutes with the officer just to say, right, where are you looking? They could then draw the filter and say, right, off you go, just click this button and just see the bits you want to see. I think it would be massive. Um, obviously police forces are, are 
going down the route of having a DEM system. In a sense, we have our own DEM system, which we've just launched. Um, oh, you still there? Yep, you are. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. I was just okay. sorry, and I just, no, I, I just, I was putting this up here um, just to say there's your contact details. Um, there, your email oh, address oh, if anybody wants to yeah. uh, get in contact. I hope people can okay. read that. Um, so, to, yeah, to answer your question, one of the things at the moment with a DEM system is now the police want local authorities to upload video to them. Um, I'm aware that obviously solutions out there. One of the great things that Kinison says is because you're pulling out just the key bits of evidence, you only need to upload small clips. You don't need to upload a 10 hours of video or three hours of video. Um, I think that will be make a big difference. Uh, if you're using milestone servers, you can export the milestone files and send them. So I, I think it will definitely help collaboration really well. Right, right. Okay, right. I'm just going to stop the sharing there. If anybody wants, they can email me and uh, get the contact details. We'll also be sharing that on the uh, follow-up um, uh, email that we send out with the recording. So, um, yeah, okay. Does anybody have any other questions they want to jump in with at this point? I see Peter's just turned on his, uh, his video. Ahead, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Thanks. Hi, guys. Thanks, Vernon. Um, I thought that was um, really interesting. And, and actually, I think that was a better presentation than the one um, I saw a year ago. So I, I feel like I, I, I understand it more. And as I said back then, for me, um, being able to clarify the a number plate, um, I see as, as, a, as a phenomenal capability because many, many, many times we get a side on number plate and um, it's critical information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, excellent. And yeah, I've, I've got, I've got another back. example somewhere where I do it with a cricket scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see who was caught, who, what runs they got. It's quite a good one, actually. Is it? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd love yeah. to see that, yeah. Right. Brilliant. No, thanks ever so much. Really interesting. Okay. Good. Do we yeah, have in... Yeah, that's great. I mean, I've, I've certainly learned a lot, I think, uh, from this uh, and um, about what you're, um, what's possible with the, uh, this uh, computerized um, automated vision uh, detection. Um, does anybody have any other questions before we, uh, before we sign off for the day? Yeah, okay. Well, I'd just like to say thanks very much, Vernon. Uh, that was a really good presentation. I think we all learned a lot about Kinesense. And um, I will be sending around a, um, uh, a link to a recording um, just as soon as I can download that and uh, put it on the website. And um, uh, apart from that, thank you very much, uh, everybody. And please um, do, if you do, if you can, just uh, hit that uh, feedback form uh, for us. So it's just a couple of questions and just helps us, you know, um, do, uh, do better. Uh, webinars in the future. So thanks very much, Vernon. Thanks everybody for joining us today. And uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, have a have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, I've, got my Chris I've got my Christmas cup ready. Oh right. Oh right. Excellent. <laughs> I've got whiskey in there, Vernon. <laughs> no, just tea. <laughs> that starts thanks. now. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.